easier than others. This one is a little more challenging. First of all, why is this one a little more challenging? Gabby? There's two. There's, R is in two places. R is in two places. So what's your first, what's the first thing you recommend you should do, David? What do you think you should do first? This is just a thought, but could yeah. you like make it two fractions on one side? Like R oh, R you could, you could. And that's not totally, that's a, that's a cool observation because R over, lowercase R over lowercase R would be R. That's actually, that's a pretty cool idea. Let's try it and see what happens. That's different, okay? I like that. So what David is saying is this is equal to R over lowercase R plus R over R. You undid it. That's really cool. Why is that actually helpful in this case? Because this equals one, right? So what do we now have? E over lowercase e is equal to big R over little r plus what? Plus one. So we can do this. We have to be very careful. What do you do next? Nope. No, if you do the common denominator now, you're going to end up right back where your question started. What do you do, Chris? We just want to simplify, uh, like, get the focus up on itself. You do. That's our overall goal. That's the entirety of this question. The, the question for this question could be rearranged to isolate R. So what? give me one math thing we could do right now. Yes? Nope. Nope. I want something better. What are we trying to isolate? Subtract oh. one. Subtract one. E over lowercase e minus one is equal to big R over R. And Gabby, what you said isn't wrong. It's just a different way of doing it. We're gonna do, I'm trying to show you the shortest way I can think of. So if we have that right now, how many, R, how many lowercase r's do we still have? One. Just one. That's still good. But what do we need to do now? No. I already told Gabby I don't want to multiply by r. So we multiply by r, we multiply everything by r, and then we're going to make more r's. What do we do on the left? We have two things. What should we do? <laughs> combine them. Oh, good answer. So how do we combine them? You do, you do. So how do you get a common denominator on the left? Over. So this becomes e over e minus 1 times what? equals r over r. Do we have a common denominator now on the left? Yeah. yeah. So what do we have here? e minus lowercase e over what? Lowercase e equals r over what? Now what should I multiply by? Now what should I multiply by? Huh? Ah, we have two fractions equaling each other, right? So what do we find now? I've asked you this two different times on two consecutive quick quizzes. We could cross multiply, but that's not how I said it. I mean, you can cross multiply, which is totally fine. I also, it's the same thing as multiplying by the LCD. Remember I asked you about that several times? So if we cross multiply, what do we end up with? R times E minus lowercase e is equal to ER. Now what do I divide by? Nope. E minus R. So R is equal to ER minus this minus this right here. This one is challenging. This one is challenging no matter how you do this. We divided both sides by this right there. Divided both sides by that. Can you simplify that? Can you cross anything out? Why not? Because the subtraction. The minus sign, yeah. The minus sign is a little block there. One. Five to one. Ratio, five to one. How many inches of fresh snow would produce 3.25 inches of precipitation? How, sorry, how, much inch, how many inches of fresh snow would 3.25 inches of liquid precipitation produce using this ratio? So they're giving us we know the ratio is 5 to 1, right? And that's snow to liquid. So it's telling us it, 3.25, is, is, is that snow or liquid? liquid. That's liquid, 3.25. And what are we solving for? Solving for x. Yeah, and we put the x like on top right here. Oh, that's it. Yes, that's it. It's telling you that the snow, it's telling you the snow to liquid ratio is 5 to 1. And it's telling you that it doesn't tell you how much snow, it tells you how much liquid you have. The wording is a little challenging, I understand. So now what do you do? You have two fractions equal to each other, so what do you do? Yeah, so you get x is equal to 5 times? 3.25. Yeah, that's it. Do it out. 15 point what? 15, uh, well, if you, want to do the, if you want to do this out, this is the same as 5 times 3 plus 5 times 0.25. So that's going to be 15 plus 1.25. So what's the answer? Yep. And it'd be great if you did the uh, units at the end. Two five inches. Yep. When you start the problem, because I see you guys at about a 30 to 40% rate, write the wrong formula down. What is the relationship between distance, rate, and time? Rate times time. Literally write that down. Okay, so distance is rate times time. So on this first line, can someone tell me what the equation is we're going to have? 10 is equal to? 
12 plus x times t and 6 equals what's in both of these what's in both of those equations t so what could you isolate in both of them t what does t equal in the first one over what's the other one t is equal to so what can you now set equal to each other 10 over 12 plus x is equal to 6 over. We have a fraction equals a fraction, so what are we going to do? So you get 10 times equals 6 times plus x. So you have 120 minus 10x is equal to 72 plus 6x. 28. So what do you get? 48 is equal to 16x. So x is equal to? Three. We didn't label our variable at the beginning, which is a crucial thing here. X. What does x represent? Speed of what? Speed. Of current. So that's also one way reason. If I had labeled it speed of current, would I usually choose? X? Well, they chose x here. That's why I used it. But what's a really good thing we could have used instead? C. C. It's a lot clearer. C. It's current. It's just easier to remember. So what's the speed? Three what? Miles per hour. Miles per hour. Done we are going to be working on right now is direct variation. y varies directly as x if there exists a real number k such that y equals kx. Variation. Direct variation. Lines that go through the origin. Lines through the origin. What's that form of a line you guys really, really like that I want to try to get you to use less? You guys like slope intercept, right? I want you to use point slope a lot more than slope intercept, right? But slope, what is slope intercept? Y equals mx plus b. What's the b value right here? What is the b value right here? It's plus zero. And what's there? It's just plus zero, right? Where does y equals kx cross the y axis? When x is zero. So what's the y value? What, no, what is the b value right here? I literally put in the number that I'm asking you for. Zero. The y-intercept is zero on this. So y varies direct. It's a straight line that goes through origin. So if I gave it all direct variation is y varies directly as x if there exists a real number k such that y equals kx. What's another name for k in this equation? M. M. So what's the name of that? Slope. That's the slope. So if you have a line that goes through the origin, you can say y varies directly as x. Yes. What does this look like on a, what does this look like? Well, if I have really terribly drawn lines right there, sorry. Here's, here's an axis. I could, I could. Ready? Any line that goes through the origin. Hey, that y varies directly as x. It, um, it goes through the origin right there. Hey, could there be another, a different slope? Sure, it could go up like that. Could it go up a little less. Oh, it could go be negative. Yeah. Can direct variation be negative? Yes, absolutely. The point is we're just looking at lines that goes through the origin. So literally it's fill in the blank. Y varies directly as X if there exists a real number K. So this just tells you that the two things are linearly related. They're on a line together and they go through the origin. That's all it means. It says Y is proportional to X. The number K is called the constant of variation or what do we like to call it? It's right there. What's it called? Slope. slope. So the constant of variation is just the slope of the line. Eight over 150. You could do 8 over 150 if you wanted to. So 8 over 150 is going to equal what? Over Distance over what? Or x over 400. I, this is excellent. I really like this. So if you want to solve this, what do you do, Gabby? <laughs> so you get 8 times what? Is equal to? Times d. So d is equal to 8 times 400 over what? 150. Now, is that a number you could find if you needed to? Sure. But you just saw that. I really like how you use the method we just used. Absolutely. Let's look at it a slightly different way. And it's actually the same math. It's actually the same math. So the, four, <coughs> the amount it stretches. Go ahead. If you want to you state it, go ahead. Couldn't you just do 400 over 150 times 8? That is literally the math we just did. But you skipped the first step, which at the beginning of class, I don't want you to do. Okay. So. If we want to set this up, it tells us that how far it stretches uh, varies directly to the force applied. Varies directly to the force applied. So the, what, what do we want to use for the amount stretched? D is the distance stretched. It says it varies directly by the force applied. Directly by the force applied. So what does D represent? Say it again. Distance what? It is stretched. 
distance stretched. And what does the F represent? Force. Force applied. The reason we can say this is because it says the distance it stretches is directly proportional. Do you see this? It's really nice. We don't need to plus anything because we know it goes through 0, right? So when f is 0, what does d equal? When f is 0, what's d? 0, because it shouldn't stretch anywhere, right? But what's the first thing it tells you? When f is 150, what's the distance? 8. So can we find k? It says k is equal to 8 over 150. What this means is we now have a formula. We can say the distance this spring stretches equals what? 8 over 150 times the force applied. This is the formula times the force applied. So if we wanted to know the distance it stretches when the force is 400, what do we plug in for F? 400. And do we get the same answer? Yeah. This is nice because what it means is could I now say, what's the distance stretched when the force is a billion? We plug in a billion times 8 over 150. The Hooke's law for that spring stays the same for all the forces. Now, is that realistic? Is the, is the, is it, is the <laughs> can, can you stretch a spring like a billion feet? Wait, no. but if, if F was a billion feet, what does that mean? Bill is a billion, uh, literally what I was just saying was, this is not always accurate to big, 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 big numbers, because is it realistic to think the, sh the, uh, the spring is like a billion feet long? No. So this is for like normal, like regular, like 150. Theoretically, but this the point is this spring stretches this much every time one newton is applied. Every time you add one newton, how far does it go? Eight over 150 with centimeters. Yeah. Centimeters. So every time there's a newton, it goes eight over 150 centimeters, right? Okay. Now, are different springs different toughnesses? Yes. So, for example, if the spring was much, much, much stiffer, would this go up or down? This number? Down. It would go down. Because the more force you apply, the less the, it would be harder to move it, right? But if it was a looser spring, like a slinky, it would go up. So if like, this was a normal one, the looser it is, this would go up. The tougher it is, it would go down. So the key, though, is the key. Do you see what I, uh, do you see what I underlined right there? Directly proportional. Directly proportional. Super important. What's another way to say directly proportional? Y equals kx, y equals kx, y equals kx. Another way to say it as a sentence is a line that goes through the origin. origin. Gabby, what's the only difference in this equation? K over x. That's the only difference. So direct proportional is y equals kx. And you might call y and x different, right? D and f, like we did before. In this case, y equals k over x inversely. The k is in the denominator. The k is in the denominator. So. This is all about plugging in things in the right place. So when you read this one, it says the distance a body falls from sky from rest varies directly. Uh, uh, this is not the one I wanted, actually. This is not the one I wanted. Inversely. Varies inversely. So you immediately write down. What do you immediately write down when you see varies inversely? Y equals, y equals k over x. So we have y equals k over x, but in, now we need to label this. It says the cost of producing the syringe. So which one is the cost of producing the syringe? So that right there is the cost, right? What's the x going to be? The number, the number produced. So if I tell you that if 10,000 syringes are produced, the cost is $2 per syringe. 10k syringes equals $2 per syringe. Could I now find K? Can you just plug in? Could it, it, literally, yes, literally. So where do I put the 10,000? No. Where do I put? No, a two, there we go, two. So two is not Y, so two is Y, not 10K. So K over what? 10,000. So what does K equal? Nope. Cross multiply, kiddo. Over one side. So what's the answer? <laughs> no. What's our formula now that we have k? What's our formula? The cost is equal to what? 20,000 20, over what? Which is what? Number of syringes. So if I have one of those, if I gave you a new cost, could you find the number of syringes? Yeah. If I gave you a number of syringes, could you find the cost? Yeah. This is about as straightforward as it gets. Just plug stuff in the right place. The most common thing is people plug it in the wrong place. 
So now if I said, uh, ready? If uh, find the cost per syringe for producing 25,000 syringes, where do I plug in the 25,000? Uh, yeah, the cost is going to be equal to 20,000 over what? 25,000. 25, this is in dollars. What can we cancel here? Whee! So that's going to be 20 over 25. What's that in fraction form? Four cents. So how many cents is that? 80. 80 cents. So that should make sense. 10,000 syringes was, 20, was $2 per syringe. So if we made more syringes, what did we expect to happen? Price, Price went down. We found the K value. What was the K value? This was important because I could, I could ask you what is the K value for an inversely proportional relationship, for an inversely proportional relationship. Now in 7.6 in variation, they give, you a few other, they give you a few other relationships. The only two that I am requiring you know are direct, this is important, and inverse. Those are the only two. There are a couple other in here that I really can't say that I've ever seen referenced very frequently at all, so I'm cutting them. Do you understand? So just direct and just inverse. inverse. That's it. That's it. That's it. You work with somebody else. You can't work alone. Go work with the boys over there then. Fine. No, it's okay. Noah, need a yeah, oh, who are you working with, David? Oh, oh, you're going over to Noah. Just make sure those don't step on it. There you go, kids. There you go. You absolutely have to have that. No. No, you don't. What's the first thing you have to do, though? Factor that. You have to factor it. So when you factor this, you end up with 3 over y minus 3 minus 3 over y minus 3 equals 2 over y minus 2. So what do you find now? The LCD. Can someone tell me what the LCD is? Y minus 2. You could do what you did over there. It's just going to be more steps, which is fine. It's just going to take you a little longer. What do you do once you find the LCD? Multiply everything. Multiply everything by the LCD. Multiply everything by the LCD. So you literally take this, and you multiply it here, you multiply it here, and you multiply it there. On the, th on the one on the left, when you multiply this fraction by this, what cancels? Y minus 3, leaving you with just what? 3 times y minus 2. And what cancels in the next one? The whole bottom, so it's just minus 3, right? Equals 2 times what? Oh, look. That's the magic of multiplying by the LCD. It kills the denominator. So now what do you do? 3y minus 6 minus 3 is equal to 2y minus 6. What happens? Oh, these go away, right? So you get 3y minus 3 is equal to? Subtract 2y, so you get y minus 3 is equal to 0. So what does y equal? 3.